It's a pleasure being with you again today on Class Online School. Our subject today is business studies. And we are going to talk about introduction to shorthand. How is shorthand introduced into our educational system, into our business system? So, we'll talk about what shorthand is, the historical development of shorthand, the importance of shorthand in business, and if time permits, we'll talk about the structure of shorthand in our educational system. So let's roll this class on by trying to explain what shorthand is. What is shorthand? Shorthand is an art of representing spoken words by signs and symbols. Representation of spoken words by written signs or symbols. What do I mean by this? The consonant sound is represented by stroke. The vowel sounds are represented by a dash or a dot. Now let me try to explain this further. If you look at this uh, example I gave here, key. The K carry the consonant sound, which will be represented by a sign. And the K will be represented by a dot or a dash. This, the K, will be represented by a stroke, which is a symbol. Then, the K, which is a vowel, this is the consonant in the word, and this is the vowel sound in the word. For the consonant, it will be represented by this, which is the strokes. Then, the K will be represented by the vowel, which is the dot. As we take more example, you will see that some will be represented by a dash. Some will be represented by a dash, and some will be represented like this, like a dot. So shorthand is just the representation of spoken English language, spoken words in English language with a stroke, a dot or a dash that's why that is what shorthand is all about so when you go to offices and you see somebody using symbols strokes dash dots to write just know that the person is writing in shorthand so we'll find out why do we study shorthand the relevance of shorthand in our educational system as it will relate to our business world. Remember, this course entirely, this business study course, is entirely to build you up as an entrepreneur, to build you up as a business person. How do you um, perfectly fit into the business world? How do you grow up to be a business person? Don't worry, my students. As we go further in our study of business study, we'll see how we're going to groom you as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as an individual who owns his own business, manage it and see how he puts into practice things he has, he or she has learned from business study. So that is shorthand, using your normal English words, like you have the D, the this, the that, how will you represent it by symbols and signs? That is what shorthand is just all about, the representation of spoken words in English language with a dash, a stroke, a dot, or symbols as we might summarize it to be. Now having seen what um, shorthand is, now what is the historical development of shorthand? How did shorthand come into being? Who invented it? How did he bring it in? The first person that brought about the development of shorthand is Sir Isaac Pittman. In 1837. So Isaac Pickman was the inventor of shorthand. 
he see how he can represent spoken words by short forms. So in a short way, short forms, short forms of how to represent the English words. That was why Isaac Pittman brought about um, short, uh, uh, shorthand. How do I put our writing, uh, uh, English written words in a very short form so I can achieve more? That was what brought about this. And then he went further. In 1975, there was a review of Isaac Pittman's work to make it more effective, to suit into the normal English system we have today. Because as the year goes by, the English system will have tried to transform, tried to reform, tried to be updated. Now, how do they update the invention of Isaac Pickman of 1837 into a more effective English system? that can take care of our normal English system. That brought about the review of Pittman uh, 2000. So in 1975, this Pittman shorthand was known as Pittman 2000. What is the relevance of this Pittman 2000? It is a process whereby the study of phonetic words in English language was incorporated into shorthand. In English language, we have the phonetic symbols, the phonetic structures. Now, how can that be incorporated into the normal shorthand system that Isaac Pittman brought about? Don't forget I said the inventor of shorthand in 1837 was Sir Isaac Pittman that invented shorthand to see how he can shorten the normal spoken English words into uh, signs and symbols which will have a stroke, dash and dot in order to have a more faster written words. If you are talking now, before I am going to write communication, communication, assembly, convention, these words are long. In forms. But even to write them in shorthand, it's just with a little stroke and dash, I am done. So before my hand moves down, if I'm writing in shorthand, it will just be a brief way. So Isaac Pittman saw, so how can I be able to do this in a more shorter form? He brought about the Pittman shorthand. Okay, now, it, there was a reform. And the reform was to study the phonetic structure in English language to incorporate it into our normal uh, shorthand system. That was the invention or the review of Isaac Pittman work in 1975. Now we have seen what shorthand is. We have equally seen the historical development of shorthand and why Isaac, knew Isaac Pittman brought it into being. And now we are going to the third one, which is the importance, why it's shorthand important, relevant in our educational system and in our normal working environment. How is it important? Let's take the third one. Since the first was shorthand, is the second, the historical development. What is the importance? Now let's take the importance gradually. It has to do with reduction in written words. Reduction in written words. The number of time it will take you to write the normal English words as you are taking notes or as you are listening to a meeting will be more reduced. The stress you go through writing is more reduced because you take the short forms. Don't forget that in shorthand, it is majorly to shorten the English words. It's a short form of the English uh, word. So it makes it faster for you to write voluminous work, faster way of writing. That is one of the importance of shorthand. Then secondly, it is used to take down notes in our meeting environment. Even in your normal classroom. Let's assume that as a teacher, as I'm teaching, you are taking down notes of what I'm saying. If you are to write it in the normal English words, you will take down little of what I will say. But if you are writing in shorthand, 
you find out that you will cover more grants, you will write more because you are using the short forms and you are following me as I'm talking. As I'm moving my mouth, you will be moving your hands on the short form. At the end of the day, we we'll know what transcription of the shorthand into longhand means as we go further. As you transcribe, you will be able to find out that you have covered more ground. You've written more things than you will have if it is the normal English language you are writing. So it helps you to take down notes in a more concise, in a more faster way, in a more, uh, will I say, in a more comprehensive way than you will have if you are using the English words. Then, the other one is, it helps you build your vocabulary. If you remember when I talk about this, the revision of um, shorthand in 1975, I told you that it incorporates the study of phonetics, phonetical structure of the English language. And when you are good at the phonetical structure in English language, you are good at using shorthand. And that builds your vocabulary. It builds your pronunciation. It helps you to be a better speaker, a better user of the English language, because you are exposed to many words and you are exposed to pronouncing them phonetically the way they are supposed to be pronounced. So the study of the review of Pittman 2000 brings about the phonetical structure, which helps you to be a better English speaker, a better English writer, a better English user. So shorthand helps you to build your vocabulary, your spoken English. That's another act. If you're a secretary in the office, it makes you well organized. Because if you are in a meeting taking notes with your boss, or if you are to represent your company or your organization somewhere, you will be able to take a comprehensive note of what is being said. And another one, as a secretary, it helps you to transcribe faster. It helps you to transcribe the spoken English words faster. So all of these are the importance of shorthand. We said it makes you um, write faster. Two, it makes you have more concise, more accurate record. We said three, it makes you a better secretary to be able to write voluminous work that will be transcribed and you have relevance, importance, uh, accuracy of work. Then we said that um, it improves your vocabulary since you have studied the uh, phonetic structure of the English language and you have good vocabulary built up, it makes you a better vocabulary user. It makes you a better speaker of the English language because you have positioned yourself in such a way that you can use it efficiently and effectively. The next place we will take is the structure. What is the structure of shorthand in a normal business environment? But don't forget that shorthand is representation of words by symbols, stroke, dash, and dots. Don't equally forget that the first person that brought about um, shorthand is Pittman, Sir Isaac Pittman in 1837. Don't equally forget that there was a review of this work in 1975 that brought about the Pittman 2000 that studied the phonetical structure of English language and tried to infuse it into the shorthand writing. And don't equally forget that the importance of shorthand cannot be overemphasized. It helps you to write faster, helps you build your vocabulary, help you be a better secretary, help you take good notes as a student, and help you a better individual because you will be a fast writer. Now let us go to the structure of business, um, of uh, shorthand in our business study course. Let's take, let's take the number fourth point on our study for today, which is the system using shorthand. We can call it the systems or we can call it the structures used in shorthand. What are the structures or what are the systems we use in shorthand? How did they all come into being? Let's take them one after the other as uh, it comes. We have the Sloan's, we have the Greg, we have the Pittman New Era, 
I'll have the Pitman 2000, I'll have the Pitman script. The slums and the grid, how were they use? The slums and the grid, they use plain sheets of paper to write their own form of shorthand, to represent their own form of shorthand or their short forms. But then, the Pittman New Era did not see it that way. The Pittman New Era used its positioning. Let's take for instance, this is a line. The Pittman New Era uses positioning. Let me take this word like this. If this is a stroke in shorthand, this is called the first place. This is the first place. This is the second place. And here it's called the third place. And so for the Pittman New Era, the Pittman New Era uses positioning in their writing, in their way of using shorthand. They use the first place position, the second place, the third place. So the voice and the, 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 the strokes, the dash, the dots are positioned according to how they are supposed to fall in. As we go further in our study, you will see how we use these words and how they are positioned when we use the Pittman New Era. Then, the Pittman scripting was invented by Emily Smith, Emily D. Smith. And Emily D. Smith did not put into consideration the, the, the Rex kind of writing. Though she uses a little of the Pittman positioning, but what she was at for was a kind of reform of the short hand usage. And she concentrated on the theory of words, the way they use words, the way consonants are used, and the way vowels are used. The positioning of the consonant, the vowels, and the use of the real English words. The theory behind this. So she uses that her own, as her own system or structure of the shorthand form. So we see three uh, usage or a kind of four. We have the slons, the greg. The slons and the gregs uses the same format. They write in a plain sheet, no positioning, just plain. You don't have to position, you don't have to dash and dot. They just write. But the Pittsman New Era uses positioning, uses dot and dash, and uses places, the first, second, and the third place. Then the script, the Pittman scripting that was invented by Smith uses the theory of words, consonants, and vowels to make up the shorthand writing. So we have seen the structures of how shorthand is used. In summary, what did we gain in our class today? We have explained what shorthand is in summary. We have equally seen the development, how shorthand come into be. We've seen that shorthand is using symbols to represent the written English words. We talk about the stroke, the dash, and the dot. We talk about the development. We told you that Isaac Newton invented it. And we have the Pittman uh, 2000 that was reviewed. Then we equally told you the importance of using shorthand makes you a faster writer, makes you build your vocabulary and the others. And then we talk about the system. We saw the great system, we saw the Pittman New Era system, and we saw the scripting, the um, Pittman scripting uh, vetted by Emily D. Smith. So all of these are what we have covered today. I know you find value for today's class, today's class, and you have gained something. Please note all these things you have learned. It's just to equip you for your exams, equip you in the normal business world, and equip you as a person. Your total you is what we want to build. Remember to always come back. If you want our full details class, or you want to buy all our courses for just one, just two, just three on business study, Go to our website, classonlineschool.com. The courses are available there. Always drop by. You are a community. You are a student. You are friends. Thank you for being part of us. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share our videos. And don't forget to tell the world about us. Thank you for being part of our class today. Until next time, goodbye.